Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an interesting problem with functions. We have a function f of x such that its inverse equals its first derivative. f inverse of x equals f prime is kind of like a functional equation, maybe a differential equation, right? So f inverse doesn't mean 1 over f of x, it just means the functional inverse of f of x, okay? Usually it's written that way. And we're going to go ahead and solve this problem, find solutions. And also, we're going to take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha, which I find pretty interesting. Hopefully you'll help me with that as well. So, how do you find such a function so that its inverse equals its derivative? Obviously, this is not a standard problem by any means, so we kind of have to make a guess and then test it out. If you know of a method to solve this without guessing, please let us know. I'll be pretty surprised. Anyways, so what kind of function can f be? First of all, we're going to think about the type of function f can be. Can it be logarithmic? Can it be exponential? Is it a polynomial? Is it trigonometric? You see, there are so many options, and we kind of test them out real quick. For example, can f of x be exponential? Let's go ahead and test it out. Something like maybe a times b to the power x, where b is the base. And obviously you don't want base to be 1, otherwise it's going to be constant. So can it be like that? Well, here's the thing. If you set f of x equals to this, then its inverse is going to be logarithmic, right? And its derivative is going to be exponential again. So, for example, how would you differentiate this? You would get a times, a is a constant, so we don't have to worry about it. b to the x, when you differentiate b to the x, you get b to the x times ln b, right? So, this is supposed to equal the inverse of this function. To find the inverse of this function, you can kind of set, you know, this f of x equal to y, and then try to solve for x, or you can switch x and y, doesn't matter which way, but some people do it this way. Uh-oh, I just messed up. It's supposed to be b to the power y. So switch x and y and then solve for y. Makes sense? Because y, this y, because it was switched, is going to give you f inverse. And to find y from here, obviously, you can kind of divide both sides by a, and then log both sides with base b, and then you're going to get the answer. When you log both sides with base b, that's actually going to give you the inverse right away because this is going to be y, so this is going to be f inverse. But notice that it's not the same thing as the derivative, right? That's kind of like a b to the x, that's a logarithmic. Can we find a and b values such that these are always equal for all x values? I don't think so. So exponential is not going to work. For the same reason, logarithmic function is not going to work either. Make sense? So we have to look for something else. Can f be, maybe, let me think about it, logarithmic? No, didn't work. Trigonometric, yes. But uh, we don't want to make it too complicated. Maybe use something like a times sine of bx, right? Obviously, we could add a cosine too, but how do you find the inverse of a function that contains both sine and cosine? That would be another good question, right? Think about it this way. And you can kind of keep it simple too, but I'll probably have to introduce some constants because there's no guarantee that sine x plus cosine x is going to work, right? But let's just go ahead and test something like this. How do you find the inverse of this function? Well, since we have two different kinds of functions here, sine and cosine, we kind of have to stick with one. And there's actually a really nice way of turning this into a single sine or a single cosine. And that has to do with dividing everything by the square root of a squared plus b squared. And of course, you also have to have that on the outside, but that's just going to be a constant. So you can kind of write it like this. And then turn this into the sine of co or cosine of a sum or a difference, and then you can just go from there. Just gave you the method. Hopefully, you can take it from there. But what if it's an individual sine or cosine, right? Then in this case, we're going to have the same idea replace um, f of x with y, and then switch x and y, so you're going to get something like a sine by equals x, and try to solve for y. To solve for y, you kind of need to divide both sides by a, which is pretty much uh, the idea most of the time, and then you have to use arc sine or sine inverse. 
again, you're going to get a very complicated expression on the right hand side, which is not going to equal the sine of something. You see, we're always running into difficulties. So let's go ahead and get with the solution. And the solution is actually accepting the fact that f of x needs to be a polynomial. Actually, a monomial in this case, or you could call it a power function if you want, but something in the form of ax to the power b. Now, in this case, if you differentiate it, or find the inverse first, right? That was going first. If you find the inverse of this function, how do you find it? Again, set this equal to y, and switch x and y, and solve for y. All right, let's do it. So, for to be able to solve for y here, we're going to divide by a again, you see, it's almost always the first step. And then you're going to raise both sides to the power 1 over b, because that's going to give you y. y is going to be x over a to the power 1 over b. In other words, that's going to be some type of root, right? So this is f inverse. And now I want it to equal f prime. But what is f prime? If f is a x to the b, f prime is going to be b times a times x to the power b minus 1. So we want these two things to be equal, and that makes a lot of sense because we are dealing with power functions. The derivative and the inverse are both power functions. Okay? I'm not going to say polynomial because 1 over b is not a, a positive integer or non-negative integer power, but we could probably just call it a power function. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other and see what happens. We get a, b, x to the power b minus 1 equals x over a to the power 1 over b. Now, I'm going to have to write this a little differently because I definitely want to mm, isolate the x here. So let's go ahead and separate this x over a into x times 1 over a and then raise it to the power 1 over b. And that can be done by raising each factor equal to, I mean, to the power 1 over b. Don't worry about this weird expression because that's just a constant, right? And a, b is a constant too. So Here's what we're going to do. We're going to compare constants to constants and powers to powers. So here, we do see that AB must equal 1 over A to the power 1 over B. Such a weird equality, right? But that's okay. Let's write it down. AB equals 1 over A to the power 1 over B. That's one equation. We do need another equation, though. But let's before we get to X, before we get to the powers, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Kind of separate the A's and B's. So... Uh, we could probably just, you know, raise both sides to the power b, I'm thinking, but that's probably going to be problematic. So here's what we can do. Put the, let's write the a as a to the power negative 1, and this is going to be a to the power negative 1 over b. Great. Now we can go ahead and isolate b here, which is kind of nice, right? Uh, if you divide both sides by b, that's going to be, I mean a a to the power negative 1 over b divided by a to the power 1. That means we're going to subtract the exponents, so that b is going to be a to the power negative 1 over b minus 1. Awesome, right? Well, not so awesome, but it, it's good. But the thing is, we have to have separate the a's and b's. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator on both sides. I could probably do this. First, raise both sides to the power negative 1, so we get rid of those negativity, because there's too much negativity in the air. And now we're going to write this as b plus 1 over b, which is equal to b to the power of negative 1. And at this point, we're going to raise both sides to the power b over b plus 1, which is going to give us a to the power 1 on the left-hand side. Great. These are going to cancel out, giving us b to the power. And negativity, we can kind of transfer over to this, b to the power negative b over b plus 1. Okay, it's not super bad, right? Let's save this because we're going to use it later on. Now we're going to do the powers. So the powers are equal, basically, meaning that b minus 1 is the same as 1 over b. That's an easy equation. Come on, you know that, right? Multiply by b, you get b squared minus b equals 1. b squared minus b minus 1 equals 1. And this has a really good flavor. You probably recognize this as soon as I write the solutions. Yes, b is going to be 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. And if you said golden ratio, you got it. Awesome. That's the B value, but what is what about the A value? Oh, man. This is going to be crazy. So let's go ahead and stick to one of these solutions because they both work, and you can definitely do the other one. But I'm going to go with the more positive one, 1 plus root 5 over 2. 
and a is going to be then 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power negative 1 plus root 5 over 2 there's a negative sign in the front divided by 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus 1 and obviously we can go ahead and take that expression and simplify a little bit let's ignore the negative for now I'm just gonna do b 1 plus root 5 over 2 and then multiply this by the reciprocal which is gonna give me 2 over 3 plus root 5 twos are gonna cancel out giving us something a little better so a can be written as 1 plus root 5 over 2 a very irrational number that can be written as negative 1 plus root 5 over 3 plus root 5. And with that information, since A, um, what is B? 1 plus root 5 over 2, I forgot what B was because A is so complicated. And now since we assume that f of x is supposed to be in the form of A times x to the power B, now we can go ahead and write our function as 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power with the negative sign 1 plus root 5 over 3 plus root 5 times x to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2. And don't you love that? That will be one of the answers. The other one is yours. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.